Hey guys, this is Production Music Live. My name is Francois and today I'm going to quickly be sharing some arrangement tricks here. So a couple of days ago I was talking to a couple of friends from back in the days when we used to make trance music and I made a lot of trance music as a kid and after talking to them I was like hey I'm kind of in the mood of making an old school Amada a state of trance kind of track here. So I sat down and used Ableton and Serum and came up with this. And um, then I sent it over to a friend of mine who's still putting out these old school trance compilations and he was like hey cool. It's a bit too short. I think it's 4, 410 or 420 or something. And he's like, could you stretch it out to 530 or six minutes? So of course that's possible, but I think it's a good opportunity to also talk about arrangement here. Basically we have two main areas, two main eight bar loops. This in the intro here is one main 8 bar loop with this main arpeggio element here. And the other one is our drop with the drop arpeggio melody of course. So this is another eight bars right here. So we have two eight bar loops and that that's definitely enough for a house track, a trance track or a deep house track. This is not only applicable to trance here, it's applicable to all types of electronic music. So we have two eight bar loops and uh, that's a perfect start to make a full track arrangement. So as you can see in the beginning here, this is basically the main part of the first half of this track and you can see I'm just like this is the fullest part we have all our elements playing here and then I'm just taking off some stuff before that to introduce this main part here you know in the beginning I'm not even playing a kick I'm not playing hi-hats or claps or something I'm just playing an intro <laughs> And also I'm keeping my bass notes on the same note throughout the first couple of bars here. This is usually the part where the DJ would mix into the track. And also I had to adjust my chords because the chord progression is going like this. And um, if we are playing our bass uh, monotonic, we also need to make sure we are playing a chord structure that works together with that. So we have. And you always have F sharp as a bass note here. So this is kind of a trick to get your pads to also be playable in the intro section and then you can open them up and play the full chord progression after a while. And it's also always nice, at least in trance music, to start your intro not with the bass note that's going to be the first note of your chord progression. So the first note here is D. But our intro is playing an F, which is incidentally the quite the last bass note of our chord progression. So that's the nice thing here. It kind of, you know, asks for the first one. I don't know if that makes sense, but let's take a look at it. I'm just going to consolidate this part here. So this intro kind of falls into our root note of the chord progression. It's kind of a release here of all this built up tension. We're releasing the tension when starting into our melodic part.
Now, you could also design it in a way where you play this first chord of your chord progression throughout the entire intro here, something like this. But then the change here is not really that interesting. So it's kind of nice to play a different structure in the beginning and then you generate a release of the tension with the first chord of your chord progression. So that's basically my main point here. Now I'm going to take a look at the break part here. You see I have these two main melodic elements. And then this arp here. And they fit together. It's not a perfect fit, but at least harmonically they do. So the fit is good enough to be transitioning back and forth between the two. And as you can see throughout the break part here where no kicks and hi-hats and nothing is playing, we kind of transition. We are taking the filters down on this one here and we're bringing the filters up on this one. And in order to make these transitions appear more naturally, like <laughs> it's an old trick of mine or many people use it, I just use this one note lead, playing the root note of the scale always on top. So we have. This is the perfect instrument for transitions. So you have, we're going over from this to, to this. You can always do that to transition into different parts. You can also see here, I'm stopping to play the most part of the, of the drum sounds and I'm going into this transition part and I'm also using this instrument here to make it appear more smoothly. the other instrument you can use for the same effect is risers. And also this part here actually combines a riser with a, a fade to gray effect. You know, opening up a reverb and a delay on the master. How do you do that? Um, you have a, a fade to gray. This one, you have a simple delay, you have a filter, and you have a large stage reverb. And you know, you connect all of these dry wets and the frequency of the low cut here and the dry wet of the uh, reverb to one single fader. Um, where is it? Here. <laughs> Okay, um, what else? Then we are falling into a build-up. We are building up our main um, melodic instrument here. And then we have a drop. We are not playing all of our hi-hats and claps from the beginning of the drop. We're just punching in with the kick. And then later we are adding claps and hi-hats. And then a snare roll. In order to keep it interesting, you can see I'm uh, I'm playing a variation of our main melody here. So we have um, we have this arpeggio pattern here.
like with C sharp up here. And you can see I'm playing it four times, but overall in this structure here, we would play it eight times and I thought that's a bit too much. So why not play a vari variation of it where we are playing not C sharp here in the beginning, but later up here. And of course, keep it interesting with automating the filter. And also you can see there's no real pattern occurring twice after one another. So first in this pattern here, we're playing the, f the upper note first and then the lowest and then the mid one last. And then we're repeating. Here we're playing the mid one first, the upper one second and that one last. And uh, here we have uh, the mid first and the lower one uh, second. And you see what I'm talking about here. It's it's always there's a little bit of a you know um, some a twist something interesting to to keep it as little boring as possible. <laughs> um, okay, so and then later you can see after the main drop has happened, we are filtering this element down and we are bringing the intro part up again to be able to you know announce our outro of the song. For the outro, there's also something nice I, I wanted to talk about. That's a very simple trick, but very effective. So you see, I have a bass sound here, this typical trance bass. And I copied it and called it Acid. Now this sound is perfect for announcing transitions as well. If we are using a frequency shifter, so where's this guy? This guy here, I'm using this in the back, you can see, and I'm automating this little knob, and that's kind of shifting the frequencies of this sound, and you can hear it here. For example, towards the end of this bar, I'm kind of bringing it up. works like a riser and you can also use it as a falling element. And this way we can kind of announce to the subconscious of the listener that something's going to change or something's going to end or something's going to start. And you see in the beginning I did the opposite. It's a very subtle effect because I'm not really using it all that much. Uh, one more element. Um, we have two types of bass sounds here. We have this rolling bass, um, this one, and we have a long bass note here. Also serum, everything here is serum. Make sure you're on headphones or on good sub speakers. And at least in trance music or also in house music, this is what you use in your break parts to make them appear more epic. And then you go back to your rhythmical bass pattern. Okay, so this is um, the analysis of what we have so far. And now I kind of want to make it longer. So um, we need sort of six minutes of this. And what can we do? We could think of having two breaks. So this is a break where no uh, kicks and claps are playing. And we could kind of get out of the drop part here, play some kind of bridge or intro, outro, intermediate part, and then go back into what we did here and just do it again. That's one option, but if I'm doing that, I need another drop afterwards and then I need an outro. And that's more an eight minute track because I'm sort of going to do all of this here again. And what is that? This is uh, one and a half minutes, this is fun. that's three more minutes. So we are already at seven. Um, it's possible, but it's not what I, I don't think I'm going to do that. 
what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to try to stretch the intro just a little more. And then I'm going to also stretch this section here a little because could play a bit longer. And then I'm also going to stretch the outro. Don't make it too complicated. But just, you know, to show you what I, what I mean by, by doubling the uh, break parts, can duplicate the time here and add all of this here in the back. And usually if you're playing your break part twice, the second break part will be shorter than the first one. The first one really showed everything. You kind of show off all the atmosphere. And the second time people are already used to that. They're already accustomed and you can like keep it a bit shorter. So for the second one, I would definitely really, uh, delete this area here. Sorry. Because it's not really needed anymore. And then we just start here. Yeah, so how could we do this? I'm just experimenting a bit. I select this eight bars, these eight bars here, and I'm deleting the time so everything falls into place. harsh, very harsh so far. So I'm bringing up the pad again. Such a subtle difference. So uh, just by opening up the filters here and by introducing this element again, we it's kind of working already again. I'm also bringing the white noise in here to phase down and up. Okay, these loops can remain. And also going to put in this riser here properly. So since this is our second drop, we already had the first one here, I'm going to punch those hi-hats and claps out right from the start. No waiting, no just playing the kick, we are putting all we have out here. By the way, if this is a, if this appears a bit too slow, because usually trance would be 137, 138, uh, 140 even at times, but you know, um, I'm kind of not used to listening to such um, fast music anymore, so I made it 130, but it's obviously also possible to pitch it up. And that would be maybe even more accurate for this genre. Another thing I wanted to show quickly is something else. Introducing the drop here and an important arrangement element, we are opening up the filter of this long serum base here towards the drop. Since this is our second drop, I would also, you know, alter our snare pattern. Maybe, um, oh, okay. So I thought I automated 
this thing. I did. Okay. <laughs> Also, kind of an unwritten arrangement rule, you wouldn't do this here. You would probably use the short one, short version. <laughs> You know, it's still like the second drop is actually, I, I just thought I could just keep this type of arrangement here. And um, I think the second drop, for example, is it's possible to put this lead somewhere here. I'm, I'm I'm okay with this arrangement to be honest we have um we have this is not an outro anymore now we have um what is this an intermediate part because just quickly for a couple of moments we are playing our bass in monophonic we are playing just one bass note repeatedly but you know, this is going down here and I actually want to use this effect in the end. That's the frequency shifter effect again. And I want to keep that effect for the end, so I'm not going to do this here. And also, since this is not the end of the song, I don't really want to keep the filters of this arpeggio low or this low i want to do that towards the end here to to prepare everybody subconsciously to the point that we are going to stop this song now or like and build up anticipation for that and but i don't want to do that here i want to like show people hey this is still going to go on we are not yet finished so i'm kind of opening up these filters here a, little, a bit more <laughs> least in trance music to keep it interesting is you know you see these filter movements here and you can see with these arpeggio sounds and they're like they have so much delay and, and reverb on them here you can see the delay feedback is all the way up and we're also playing a lot of reverb on top of it 
I'm closing the filters always towards the end of the eight bars and then quickly opening them back up. And this kind of keeps it interesting here. You know, it keeps the movement of these filters flowing. You're like, yeah, it's going, it's going to open up another time. <laughs> So that's definitely a great tool for arranging your tracks and, you know, preparing your listener to different types of situations. So. yourself why am I using utilities to automate the volume over time I want to keep my master faders here free without any automations for the mixing stage of my tracks so whenever I'm mixing a stage I don't want to be messing around with automation lines just because I want to bring this up to decibels or something that's why I'm using utilities here but I'm sure if you've been following this channel for a while you've seen that already and um, Hoping you're doing it as well because you're really saving time. Just bring it down again a bit here. Where's this minus 15? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> look at our pad automation. You don't want it too open because it's kind of eating up the frequencies we need for our arpeggio here. Yeah, that was already 
already too much, so kind of eating the beginning here. <laughs> going to keep it here and we're going to repeat whatever happened um, again and we have a track that's a bit longer than six minutes now so this is the anatomy of a simple trance arrangement here you can also use this type of technique for progressive house for example all types of house music will work as well we're currently in the process of finishing an arrangement course for our courses platform. So it will be up in a couple of days. If you're interested, check it out. You can learn more about arranging different sorts of music. And we will also take a look at the theoretical foundations. So this is a simple trance arrangement. You see, it's a very simple track. We are only using very few elements here. You can use a lot more layers and stuff, but um, it also already works like this. And it's now it has a good length for a trance arrangement. And now I'm going to play back the whole thing for you to get a good feeling of the arrangement. You can also press repeat. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. Feel free to check out our website productionmusiclife.com. It's our website supporting this channel, giving us the ability to put out videos like this. And we have courses there, samples, sound packs, also project files like this one for Ableton, only using Ableton built-in effects, plus usually one more BST plugin like Serum here. Feel free to subscribe to our channel and I hope to see you next time.